Hi, I'm Hazel, and today I'm going to be going over what kind of gear is available from Warfronts and how to get it. So to understand when these different types of loot are available, first you need to understand the Warfront cycle. There are four distinct phases, and they will cycle indefinitely in this order. So the phase that Warfronts launched in, at least as far as I know in NA, was the Horde turn-in phase. Horde players were able to complete quests that required material turn-ins in order to progress a bar. It's unclear how directly that bar progression is tied to the turn-ins that were done. Nobody can queue for an instanced Warfront in this stage. Out in Arathi Highlands, Alliance players will have access to a world boss that drops item level 370 loot, and then everybody has access to a variety of rares across the zone that have a chance to drop you 340 loot. So the rares are available to both factions, but in this phase, any Horde players in Arathi Highlands will be PvP flagged regardless of their war mode setting. Alliance don't gotta worry about that yet. After that bar fills up, we move into the Horde Can Queue phase, in which the Horde Can Queue for the instanced Warfront experience for about a week. At this point, nothing else changes from the last phase, Alliance players still have the World Boss, both factions still have the Rares, and Horde players will still be hostile while within Arathi Highlands. During the first two phases, Alliance players will also have a set of quests to complete out in Arathi Highlands that are on a once per cycle lockout. So after the week of Horde Queue time, the outdoor Arathi zone flips, Alliance players can now begin their contributions, Horde players can now begin their quest out in Arathi Highlands, Alliance players will be PvP flagged in the zone, Horde players will get access to their world boss, and it's basically the mirror opposite of the first phase, and then of course following that we get the mirror opposite of the second phase, where Alliance players can queue. In order to check the bar progress or to queue for a Warfront during your faction's queue phase, you should visit your Warfront table located here for Alliance and over here for Horde. That portal was not always working for me, I don't know if that's buggy or not, but if the portal's not working, you can also just port from Stormwind or Orgrimmar to the Twilight Highlands and fly north, or Hearth to Dalaran, take the old Dalaran Crater portal to the Hillsbred foothills, try not to die with a fall, and then fly from there. So for loot, the first source of loot is from that world boss, so you can only do the world boss while your faction controls the outdoor zone. You can loot the world boss once per cycle, so it is not in a weekly lockout, it is once per cycle. So if you've killed and looted the boss once, you need to wait for the whole cycle to repeat again before you can kill it again for another chance at loot. The world bosses are these faction-themed Azerite war machines, and they drop item level 370 loot. It is a world boss, so while it can drop you item level 370 loot, it's not guaranteed, you can kill it and loot it and get nothing, and that sucks. The second piece of loot is guaranteed, and that is while your faction controls the outdoor zone, in that set of quests that has you out killing ogres and elementals and whatever, one of those quests will give you a guaranteed item level 340 piece of Azerite gear. The alliance quest for that is to kill the Defilers at the Goshek farm, while the Horde will be killing the League of Arathor out at Davyri's farmstead. That quest is also once per cycle, and available only while your faction controls the zone. The next source of loot is the rare mobs out in Arathi Highlands. There are a whole bunch of them, and they each have a chance to drop you a piece of item level 340 loot every cycle. You can loot these once per cycle. If you have already looted it for the current cycle, then you will not see a star appear on your minimap while you are near the mob. They can also drop other goodies such as pets, toys, and mounts, and the rares are available to both factions all the time. But if your faction does not currently control Arathi Highlands, then you will be PvP flagged and it's probably advisable for you to roll around in a group. Source of loot number four is the actual instanced Warfront, so you can only access this content during that one week right after your faction finishes the contributions. There will be a quest to pick up to complete one Warfront, and that will give you a cache with a guaranteed piece of item level 370 loot. The piece that you get is random, but you're guaranteed to get something, and it's guaranteed to be at least item level 370. All of the loot from all of these methods is the PvP gear, so if you want to see what the stats look like on it or what the transmog looks like on it, it is the same set as the PvP gear, and these things can include weapons. So if you're really lucky, you can get an item level 370 weapon out of your Warfront cache for doing your first Warfront once you have it. And if you're lucky, you can also get item level 340 weapons dropping off of the rares in Arathi Highlands. The final source of gear is also from the instanced Warfront itself. Every time you complete one of those, you will get a random piece of PvP gear that is guaranteed to be at least item level 340. So while your faction has access to the instanced Warfront, you can spam queue them to repeatedly keep getting those random item level 340 pieces. Those can also Warforge. So that gear is the same item level that can drop from a basic level mythic dungeon. For a geared player, you will probably find it faster to do basic level mythic dungeons, but those are on a once per week lockout and they may be harder to find groups for if you are in a fresh undergeared character. While with the Warfront, you can just queue for it. You can queue for it as many times as you have the sanity to do, and you can go in there as a freshly leveled character. You don't have any kind of item level requirements. So the drawback there is that it's only accessible for one cycle of this four cycle plan, so it's projected to be approximately one week out of every month. And and the other drawback is that these things take a fair bit of time, and it's probably more time on average than a Mythic Zero dungeon with a reasonable group. So that's how you gear up through Warfronts. 
There is plenty of valid discussion to be had on whether or not this was a good idea design-wise, but I will say that personally, I'm not mad about any potential additional sources of weapons so I can get rid of my 325 staff. I'm over it. In any case, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think. Leave a like if you liked it and have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye.